Hello, and welcome to kind of an unusual thing for the channel. You see, Ryan and I had the chance to play a game called Malia Lands of Legends a couple weeks ago, and in fact, we did a preview for it that gave a good overview of the game right here on the channel. But after that, I decided to go to the campaign myself to check it out, and what I found were a number of incredible breakdown videos that went through every facet of what the game is doing. Now these videos are done incredibly well, probably better than we could have possibly ever done in one preview video. So I asked the publisher if we could take those videos and put them here on our channel as well to help give you a little bit deeper understanding of all the different things that the game is doing. So after our preview and after this video, if you have any questions at all, which I can't imagine you will, but if you do, please make them in the comments below. But until then, enjoy these videos. In the game Malia, Land of Legends, you'll explore the game board that represents a region of the upper lands of the planet Malia. Your heroes are represented by a group token that is placed on the board based on the scenario's instructions. You'll traverse this region using the timeline. This simulates the passing of time and represents a different part of the day and night cycle. Place the weather token on its good or bad side depending on the scenario. Now, it is time to draw a travel card corresponding to the time of day that you are at. Here, it is a day card. To read the card, first look at the illustration. Here, it indicates that this card is activated in the swamp. Verify if your group token is on the same type of terrain. If it is not, the card is rotated and slid under the first available space on the timeline. You can now apply the effect of this card. Here, you collect two travel tokens. The weather token indicates the rules for moving the group token. With good weather, you require two travel tokens to move. Use these tokens to move the group token to an adjacent space. Once all actions are complete, players can now draw a new travel card depending on what time of day it is. If the terrain type matches the one under the group token, players tuck this card under the next available slot on the timeline. This card now becomes activated and an event will happen. You'll now draw an event card and face it so it corresponds to the current weather conditions. Then slide the event card under the day card to form a chapter number. Once you have done this, you'll refer to the event booklet, search for the number indicated and follow the instructions. Note that some cards may change the weather. In this case, Turn the weather token to the indicated side. Some travel tokens will have conditions. You'll need to check to see if they are fulfilled before you can collect them. In Malia, Land of Legends, you'll play as one or many heroes. Each hero comes from one of the numerous people of the upper lands of Malia. Every player chooses a hero and takes their hero board as well as a card corresponding to their people. A knapsack board is also placed to the left of this hero board. This card indicates the level of certain starting characteristics of your people. The number of aura points at the hero's disposal. A number of life points represented by crystals that are placed on the allocated spaces in the knapsack. And finally, their carrying capacity, represented by a player's individual coloured cube. This sets the limit for the number of object cards and raw materials your hero can transport. The hero board shows the various traits of your character which you will be using throughout your adventure. Here we have the action points that you will keep track of with this special cube. Each hero has six action points to spend on their turn as they wish to perform different actions. These points are restored at the beginning of every new round. Movement. This indicates the number of free movements that you can make each round. A hero can spend additional action points to increase their movement. Characters can move orthogonally and diagonally. Initiative is primarily used in combat mode. It determines the character's turn order and can also be increased by spending action points. 
Each hero can also put themselves on standby by spending the indicated amount of action points to momentarily end their turn. Putting yourself on standby allows the other players to take their turns and the ability for you to jump back into the action at any given moment. This can be very useful in combat mode or stealth mode. Throughout the adventure, your heroes will face challenges in the form of skill tests. These include strength, dexterity, senses, intelligence, and knowledge. Each time one of them is used, you'll refer to the corresponding number of that skill. The higher the number, the more skilled that character is at the challenge. Each player will be able to level up their hero. During the adventure, evolution points will be awarded to the heroes that will not only allow them to increase the level of their characteristics, but also to receive bonuses according to the evolution of their chosen people. Also, players will use and upgrade different weapons, find equipment, artifacts, and obtain new talents. Plus, thanks to the aura points, the heroes can boost specific actions to use special effects. These points are valuable because they do not regenerate automatically. In Malia, Land of Legends, you will not only travel vast terrains of the upper lands, you will also explore dark dungeons or forgotten fortresses. Your adventures will take you to many mysterious and dangerous places. When reading the adventure booklet, you'll be asked to refer to the exploration booklet. This allows you to set up the location your heroes are currently exploring. First of all, you'll take the indicated tiles and arrange them according to the plan. Also placing out enemy deployment tokens. The red line indicates terrain spaces with objects blocking line of sight and movement. Walls too are natural blocking elements. The yellow dotted lines are terrain spaces hampering the line of sight and movement. Going back to the adventure booklet, it indicates the number type of the enemies and the number of enemies present in each room. Take and display the corresponding enemy cards next to those rooms. For deployment, look at the table showing the number of players and deployment colored tokens. Column by column, place the enemy figures on the corresponding tokens. In this case, if three heroes are in play, you will add enemies from the first two columns. When a figure is already present on the deployment token, a new figure is then placed on the adjacent space of the player's choosing. Continue doing this for each column if four or five heroes are playing. You can now close the adventure booklet. To complete the installation, place the exploration book next to the room for all the players to see and verify if it's correct. Now you can acquaint yourself with the icons and any text to understand the specifics of the room. In some cases, you'll be asked to install access tokens. In others, area of interest tokens. These always have an associated number, and when a hero is on that token space, they must immediately refer to it in the adventure booklet. You will also find the hero's deployment space there. Place a hero figure of your choice on that space, then place the others on spaces adjacent to it. One or more specific exit conditions may also be indicated as well. If your group is in a random dungeon represented by a dungeon tile, you will have to remove the current event card and draw a new one. Check if you are in stealth mode or in combat mode to turn the card to the right orientation. Then slide it under the tile until a chapter from the adventure book appears. When your group leaves the room, it can be removed from play. In Malia Land of Legends, your hero skills will be put to the test. When reading an event, an outcome may be suggested to you or even imposed. These skill tests can be for the individual or the whole group. The action to be performed is always stated as well as the main skill to be tested. Refer to your skill number and take the corresponding number of 12-sided white skill dice. On the skill dice, there are some faces marked success. Always follow the difficulty of the test by taking a number of 12-sided black difficulty dice shown. On these difficulty dice, you will always find a face marked stop. During a test, you will have to take all of these dice and roll them at least once. During each roll, first count the number of faces marked stop and take the equivalent number of corresponding tokens. Then check the conditions for immediately ending the test. Here, it's two stops. 
If the limit is reached, your test ends immediately and your accumulated successes are discarded. Now you will need to apply the effects explained in the text and nothing else. If you did not meet the failure conditions, then make a count of all the faces marked success and take that number of corresponding tokens. You must now decide whether to stop or continue the test. If you stop, cross-reference the number of successes you have and apply the effect. If you decide to continue, you must take all of the dice and re-roll them. Any new tokens gained are added to your existing collection. During group tests, the heroes play individually in the order of their choice. When a hero is finished, their successes are stored for the group. The effect indicated in the test result conditions only applies when all the heroes have taken the test. The validated successes are not discarded, they are put aside until the last hero has finished rolling. Stop tokens are discarded at the end of a hero's turn before the next hero takes the test. Beware, on the skill and difficulty dice you can find some special faces. Until they are activated, they are considered blank. Stated in the test is the possibility to use a specific ability. This allows heroes who have developed this ability to activate the special faces and therefore gain the indicated bonuses. If several abilities are activated when the special face is rolled, its effect applies to all of them. Sometimes certain skill tests will need to be done individually by each hero. The players must all perform the test in turn, discarding their successes and stop tokens at the end of each test. In Malia, land of legends, your band of heroes will not only have friendly encounters, but from time to time have to bear arms and use them without restraint against a number of enemies, each more formidable than the next. There are two types of combat, melee and ranged. These will be determined by the weapons used and the position of your opponent. During combat, special six-sided dice are used. There are red attack dice, yellow power dice, and blue defense dice. There is also the black dodge dice, which are usually used when attacking at a distance. Melee combat can only take place between figurines in adjacent spaces and equipped with melee weapons. To use a weapon, the hero must pay the necessary action points. In this case, they take the corresponding dice and roll them to see how much damage is inflicted. The hero will then roll the defense dice as indicated on the card of the targeted enemy. When resolving, you must first check if the failure face on the black die is visible. In this case, the attack is a failure and the opponent suffers no damage. Otherwise, you compare the damage points and defense points. Each undefended damage removes one life point from the opponent. Remember to place the damage tokens near the figurine concerned. Ranged combat can only take place between characters with a valid line of sight and using ranged weapons. Verifying line of sight is as follows. With combatants in the same row, a line is drawn from center square to center square. Alternatively, if combatants are diagonal, you draw a line from the closest corners of both squares. If there are no blocking obstacles on this line, you can shoot. Then roll dice like in a melee attack. All types of dice have their own special faces. These have no effect until they are activated. To activate, the hero needs to apply the indicated effect. Weapons can be improved if a hero has developed the required level of skill or a particular condition has occurred. By default, each enemy targets the nearest hero not already engaged in combat. If all the heroes are engaged or too far away, then they will engage the nearest hero. When an enemy attacks, simply refer to the attack line on the card and take the corresponding dice while applying any effects. When your hero is attacked by an enemy, you select your defense that of your weapon by spending the action points required and then adding any additional defenses such as armor bonuses. Dice are then rolled and effects are applied. Enemies have the ability to inflict several types of damage, shock damage, standard damage and serious wounds. The hero undergoing them must then move life point tokens into the corresponding spaces. Each type of life point recovers differently. During a combat round, the initiative level determines the turn order. The character with the highest initiative starts, followed by the character with the next lowest initiative in descending order. In case of a tie, it's always up to the heroes to choose. At the start of a combat round and only then, the heroes have the opportunity to improve their initiative if they wish by spending a number of action points. 
When all the heroes have made their choice, they must draw random enemy behavior tokens and place them on each of the enemy cards. This is the bonus that they will have for this turn. The round can now begin. In Malia, Land of Legends, your heroes will sometimes have to be stealthy. If the scenario indicates it, your heroes will be able to enter a room without the enemies knowing it. In this mode, the heroes are going to need the stealth board. This is placed on the side, indicated by the scenario, either as a normal stealth level or a difficult one. The board indicates all the specific rules for stealth mode. The main rule is simple. When an enemy sees a corpse token or a hero figurine, and this enemy cannot be eliminated at that moment, the stealth mode ends immediately. The board also indicates the particular actions that the heroes can perform. First of all, the heroes can move stealthily. The rules for movement are the same as in combat mode. Heroes can use ranged weapons to assassinate an enemy at a distance by spending 5 action points. The line of sight rules apply in the same way as during a fight except for the interfering elements of scenery which, in this mode, block the line of sight. The figurine of the enemy thus assassinated is replaced by a corpse token. This body thuds to the ground meaning a noise token is also placed. Heroes will also be able to assassinate an enemy in close combat with any weapon, even their bare hands, by spending 4 action points. No noise token is added as the corpse can be laid down silently. Finally, the heroes can move a corpse to a space adjacent to its position or to its own space by spending one action point. Note that it is possible to stack corpses, to walk on them and of course hide them. In stealth mode, an element, hero or corpse is considered hidden when it is positioned on an obstructing space, represented here by the yellow dotted lines, or a shadow space represented here in blue. In this case, the element is only visible to the enemy when it is adjacent. Then the player ends their turn by rolling one white threat dice per type of action performed. For example, this hero moves to an enemy whom they assassinate in close combat, then ends their turn. They have carried out a movement and an assassination action. They take two white dice, one for each action, and roll them. For each symbol rolled, you advance the cube on the threat track. If a player performs three different types of action during the same turn, they won't roll three white threat dice, but one black threat die. If this special face is revealed, this triggers the alarm and stealth mode ends immediately. The threat track is used to indicate to the heroes the number of visible spaces the enemy can see around their figurine, as well as the number of action cards to draw simulating their movement. The more the threat increases, the more the enemies move and the further they see. If the cube reaches the last space on the track, the alarm sounds, ending the stealth mode. When stealth mode has failed, the corpse and noise tokens are removed as well as the stealth board and action cards. Then you jump into combat mode. During stealth mode, the heroes always start playing in the order of their choice. When the heroes have finished completing their turn, the enemies move. When the enemies have finished moving, any heroes on standby can resume their turn. When a new round begins, the heroes regain all of their action points. To move the enemies, all players have to do is refer to the cube on the threat track and take the corresponding number of action cards and reveal them one by one. The orientation of these cards is important. They must all be aligned with the compass on the room, all facing north. In this example, several enemies are scattered around the room. The threat track stipulates that two action cards must be drawn. In the upper part of the first card, it indicates that the two enemies closest to the blue deployment token move three spaces towards this token. Beware, only enemies that can move towards this space are considered. If an enemy is already on this space, it ignores this command. Same thing for enemies adjacent to an enemy on this token. Now, if an enemy is on the blue deployment token, they and they alone move in the indicated direction of three spaces. In addition, the vision token is placed on the space in front of them. Again, only they will have this infinite vision over the width of three spaces, applying line of sight rules as normal. After turning over the second card, which stipulates that the two enemies closest to a noise token must move four spaces towards that token. This effect applies to each noise token present in the room, each enemy moving a maximum of spaces but only once. Now the threat track increases for each enemy eliminated in this room. 